So the city of Boulder, we have a climate action plan. Um, I'm sure. And dedicated to reducing the city's carbon footprint. We've Good. voted to tax our electricity bill, with carbon tax. Good for you. We have an entire city department mm -hmm. working on this. Is this just all a waste of time and it's a taxpayer gesture. money? It's a, it's a gesture designed to make the good people of Boulder feel virtuous. And it will have no, zero, measurable effect on the climate of our planet. Does anyone in Boulder think it will? Seriously. Anyone? Well, I, I don't know if the premise of your question is right. I don't okay. know if she is attempting to okay. revive her political career. What do you think career. she's attempting to do? Sell books. Okay. It's very that's straight, it. very straightforward. Well, okay. I, uh, that's what we know. Okay. The rest is surmise. Okay. And it, it uh, frankly, it serves the interest of certain adversaries of hers to, uh, to make her the face of the Republican Party. Uh, they've tried to do this with Ann Coulter. Remember a few years ago, Time Magazine mm -hmm. put this utterly unimportant uh, minor league showbiz personality, Ann Coulter, on the cover of Time Magazine as mm -hmm. the face of conservatism. They knew what they were doing, and all the rest of us do too. Uh, Sarah Palin is, um, when she was nominated to be vice president, she was only a one-term Alaska governor. Now she's not even a one-term Alaska governor. Mm -hmm. Uh, she's not going to be president. She's not going to be the Republican nominee. And she's not that interesting. Uh, I, I think the natural rhythm of American politics says that not invariably, but usually, the mm -hmm. party out of power, particularly in the uh, first election after a presidential election, gains seats. Mm -hmm. And I think they will. The country is um, clearly dismayed about much that's going on in Washington. The independents who powered the uh, Obama Express in 2008 have left in droves, not least in Colorado, as, by the way, as uh, the polls indicate. So they, for, the, for the first time in a very long time, a generic poll question, mm -hmm. do you prefer a Republican or a Democratic candidate for Congress, now favors the Republicans by a small margin. So I would expect some uh, seats to be picked up in the House, which what doesn't matter nearly as much as would the pickup of three or four Senate seats, mm -hmm. which would change how Washington works dramatically. Well, I think actually starting with health care uh, in the midst of the worst contraction since the recession, the country is desperately concerned about uh, their 401ks, persistent and still rising unemployment, the decline of revenues to the federal government that accelerates the coming crisis of the welfare state, all of this. And what do we do instead? We have decided to have, to concoct an enormous new entitlement program to pile on the rickety structure of the existing entitlement menu. I think the country's mood pretty clearly is on health care. They'd like the government to take a mulligan and start over. And it's still possible that will happen. Do you think we're going to see legislation this year? I don't know. I, the strong likelihood is that, I mean, the president will sign anything, so they'll pass something, is, is I think what most Just people think. Well, yes, they have, they have bought, I don't know that they believe it, but they find it tactically useful to say that the reason they lost the, the House in 1994, lost 52 seats after 40 years of control was that they didn't pass health care. It's a preposterous mm -hmm. idea, absolutely preposterous. Democrats controlled both houses of Congress in 1994, and the thing never came to a vote because the public didn't want it. Uh, there was the House banking scandal in 1994. There was a crime bill that was causing turmoil. I mean, there were five other reasons more important than, than the failure to pass a bill the country didn't want anyway. The president's problem with this health care from the start has been he's trying to effect radical change on a subject intimately important to Americans without an underlying discontent to propel this. 85% of Americans have health insurance, and a vast majority of that vast majority are broadly satisfied with what they've got. Well, in fact, because they're not enforcing the law, uh, 
medical marijuana is effectively legal in California, mm -hmm. or at least it's a local option in mm -hmm. California. Some communities in California are going to do what some communities in Colorado are going to do, which is say it's a violation of a federal law, therefore we're not required to allow the sale of this product. Mm -hmm. The dilemma you get into in, in, when you have wink, wink, quote, quote, medical marijuana mm -hmm. is that everyone knows it's hypocrisy, everyone. Mm -hmm. Obviously there are some legitimate medical uses mm -hmm. of marijuana. Equally obviously, most of the people dropping into the local clinic for a 15 minute consultation with, a, mm -hmm. with an MD and pay $95 to come out with a prescription for medical marijuana to mm -hmm. prevent insomnia or headaches or anxiety or some other extremely vague ailment, uh, understand that they're, they want to smoke marijuana. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's curious to me that, uh, I mean, the average age of the Coloradan showing up now at these clinics, these dispensaries, has plummeted from about 41 to about 23 in a matter of weeks, I'm told. Now, that means a lot of the people going in to get marijuana to smoke would faint if someone lit a cigarette in their presence. And there isn't a doctor in the world who would recommend ingesting medicine by smoking a plant. I mean, it's preposterous. So the, the, the dilemma is this, you either legalize marijuana with uh, un, unforeseen and unforeseeable consequences, or you institutionalize hypocrisy. And institutionalizing hypocrisy is probably where most states will come down. Make up your mind, is it global warming or climate change? Well, let me just, I guess the qu first question I wanted to ask you is, I just wanted to clarify, what exactly, what exactly do you think is going on? I think, is the climate changing? Of course, there's 100% certainty that the climate at any time in the last 10,000 years has been changing. Uh, last 100,000 years, for that matter. Climate's always changing. The question is, is there A, global warming? B, is it man-made? Mm -hmm. C, can we do anything about it? D, can we do anything about it? at a cost commensurate with the damage have to be caused by global warming. E, is it possible that for parts of the planet, global warming would be a good thing, et cetera, et cetera. Any Many of the people campaigning about, well, the answer is that I don't know. What distinguishes me is that I know I don't know. And lots of other people don't know, but they don't know they don't know. As you know, there's been 11 years now without measurable global warming. A phenomenon not predicted by any of the models, the climate models, on which we are now supposed to wager trillions of dollars. Some of these models now say, by the way, we might have several decades of global, war uh, global cooling, uh, but never mind, at the end of that, global warming will resume, trust us. So this all now comes down sorry, to- it, 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 I just didn't hear what you that, said. That, it may, that global warming may resume, trust us on oh, that. Trust now, us. Okay. The, the, the problem is that um, we had models in the 1970s that caused my magazine, Newsweek, to run a cover story on our cooling planet. Uh, it's a um, Science Magazine, Nature Magazine, all kinds of magazines. It was a, there was a broad consensus that we, there would be a Northern Hemisphere glaciation, something like an ice age. The armadillos were reported to be leaving Kansas, heading for Texas to escape the onrushing cold. Then there came a great oops. Well, we got that wrong. But this time we've got it right. <laughs> 